Hello and welcome to another episode of Japanese Anime Mania, or JAM. Oh, another series that I really, really, really love to read because, just, you know, as I said a couple episodes ago, I reviewed Higurashi. Now, we will go over the sister series, Umineko. Again, same deal. I found a book series, I was like, let me read this. Then I realized it's a game series from the same publisher, and I was just like, I have to find out what's happening in the murders. So I read the novel, I'm just like, alright, going, going, going. It's good, it's good, it's good. There's an anime? Let me watch the anime! Yeah. Let's watch the anime. So, as I said, today, we will review Umineko no Naku Koro ni. Let's go. Now, I hate doing this, but I'm going to have to draw comparisons between two different series. Because Higurashi and Umineko are almost one and the same. Umineko is set in October of 1986, to where we follow our character Battler, who goes and visits his family that he hasn't seen in years. From there, the family all gets together and whatnot, but then, what's the true meaning behind the family reunion again? Well, it turns out grandfather's about to kick the bucket. And so, the whole family is gathered together to think about who will inherit the fortune that grandfather has acquired. During dinner, one character pulls up a note that there is a witch called Beatrice within their presence who signed a contract with grandfather for all his vast fortune of gold. Here's the catch though. In order to claim the gold, the family must band together and solve a riddle that Beatrice and Grandfather have created. And if they cannot, then Beatrice will kill them all and take the gold. With that story build up, it's just like, there can't be anything wrong with this. And again, reading the manga, I was like, I was just, I could not put it down because I needed to find out who was going to be killed, what was going to happen, and everything else. Character-wise. Okay, let's be honest here. I am not going to cover every character in this show because right off the bat, we have 17 characters. That's all of the family, including servants, butlers, maids, all of that, as well as later on, like I said, there's Beatrice and there's more witches, and then each witch has her own servant, and then from there they have their own butlers, their own maids, so it comes out to like a cast of 50, or even more by the end of the show. And it's just like, I can't keep up with everybody. And even like, there's a character called Birkenstill, who sounds oddly familiar and looks like Rika from Higurashi. I wonder what that's about. But anyway, there's just too many characters to go off about. We will talk about the two main characters in this whole show, Badler and Beatrice. Badler's entire goal in this whole show is to prove that magic and witches do not exist. Because Beatrice is claiming, oh, I killed your whole family with magic. Battler says not. And if Battler can prove her wrong, and then she will just undo all the murders that have happened. How that happens, I'm not entirely sure. But I'll explain why it's kind of hard to explain that later on. Animation and sound. Okay, I will say it is better than Higurashi. It came out a little bit later, so it had more time to polish. But here's the problem here. It does nothing really different. Even though Higurashi has different story arcs, and it still managed to use the same set pieces, we can see different sides of the story from different characters. And that's what made the show more enjoyable. With Umineko, unfortunately, and for some reason, the creators thought it'd be a good idea to have more talking than action. Because within these story arcs, Beatrice and Battler are seeing their own personas in a different parallel universe on how this, the murders could have happened. And so a lot of it is just them talking to each other and bickering the entire show while then we flip-flop back and forth to the alternate reality version of what's happening. Sure, that's really cool in theory on paper to read, to play a game, but to watch, it's not entertaining at all. It's really boring just to sit there and be like, okay, moving on. Can we just get to some action bits? Okay, we got some blood and murder. That's cool. 
All right, we're back to talking. Nothing really happens in those sequences, and that's what makes the show kind of boring in some pieces. Now, I will congratulate it on the sound piece because, as Higurashi was before, Uminako manages to capture all the creepy tones and music. It's like, yes, this is what I came for. And it, I didn't have a panic attack with this soundtrack, but it was still really, really creepy and it fit the show perfectly, even though when the show didn't realize it was supposed to be creepy at some points. And that was about it. So, for the final verdict, I would have to say to stream it. Why stream, you say? You love Higarashi! Well, the problem is, is that the show ends. It just, not ends as in like, fixes the whole thing. But the problem is, is that the show just straight up cuts off and ends. Because Umineko is still an ongoing game. And that's what infuriates me about the show. It doesn't infuriate me as much as the light novel pieces. They stop it at a point where it's just like, I need to know what's going to happen. And that cliffhanger is more annoying to the, due to the fact that there is no way to figure out the true ending of the show. And another thing is that there is no possible continuation of the show due to the fact of low sales in Japan, as well as it just didn't do good. And it's not that great when you think about it. As I said, the music is good. The animation is a little bit better than Higurashi. Story is great, but no one just really connected with it because I suppose they just thought it was the same thing as Higurashi. So yes, unfortunately, just stream the show and in some cases probably just skip it. Umineko is licensed by Nice America and is streamable on KissAnime.com. For all kind of recommendations, I would have to say, Go Sick. Go Sick just pretty much, you know, had the same idea, we have the same clothes, same music, not as much as the violence and whatnot, but we still get that whole detective tone that actually goes somewhere. Ghost Sick is licensed by Madman Entertainment and is streamable on KissAnime.com. For another ultimate recommendation, I have to say Danganronpa. Now, this show is the reason why I kind of want to get a PS Vita because of all the games that only come out for the Vita. And it's just like, I want to find out more of the murders happening. Danganronpa is just... The characters trying to figure out the murder between them and trying to not kill each other over it. Danganronpa is licensed by Funimation and is streamable on their website. Thank you so much everyone and happy Halloween! Jazzy on Been around the world, don't speak the language, but your booty don't need explaining. All I really need to understand is when you talk dirty to me.